This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles, on the Rockstar Radio Network. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd on the Rockstar Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, top of the author and publishing day to everyone and... Um, I'm excited because we are having back again one of our favorite guests, Stephanie Barco, has been with us many, many times on your guide to book publishing. And what's unique about Stephanie is that she knows how to take a book and find the unique niches to it, get it out there and get other people to rock and roll and promote it and support it because what she does is she is one of the top literary publicists in the United States. She has a variety of award-winning clients, both through the traditional realms of publishing as well as small presses and the independent writers. And what I'm excited about is that, I mean, I, I know that many, many people are going to be listening to this long past September 21st when Stephanie is going to be in Colorado speaking to the home base of the Author You community for the uh, for a really author promotional panorama which we are going to go deep dive into during this session some of the things that she's going to create um, and talk about as well as what you as a listener can take away right now and use for your book so whether you are traditionally published with New York or a subset of New York or a very small press or you are on your own and you're going to be doing your own publishing house what she's going to share and what we'll dive into is elements that you're going to be able to use and really get the attention that your book deserves so Stephanie welcome back thanks great to be here Judith all right so what's new in the literary publishing publicist realm <laughs> well that? you know amazon's always changing and uh, anything amazon does affects us so that's one moving target that we always have to watch um for instance uh, getting a pre-order listing is is hard these days for independent publishers and you know how do you do that uh, just the whole line into Amazon seems to be uh, changing, and they own more. And if it's not Amazon, it's Google and what they own and what's going on. So these are some of the places that I watch for trends and uh, changes. Today I looked at Facebook, for instance, and it was entirely different. There's all these ads in my right uh, sidebar, and that that's brand new. That wasn't there yesterday. So Facebook is changing. So it's just a constant uh, role of, of changes going on on the Internet every time we go there to promote a book. Well, let's, let's kind of talk about those. Since you've already opened up a couple of uh, windows here, what's going on with pre-orders with Amazon? And, and, and as a publicist, mm -hmm. what would you like to see an author slash publisher uh, do in their setup for stages of setup with Amazon before they get ready to let the world know? I think it's really important to try to get a pre-order listing up. It's not easy. I had one author recently who was able to do it. He's independently published, and he was able to do it, but he went through some uh, Amazon Advantage program and, and actually right. paid – yeah, and actually paid a fee to get it up. Um, and then I had another author that I looked into, and their their release date is going to coincide so closely with when they actually create title uh, that I don't think um, – it's going to be much of much use to them to try to get a pre-order listing because it'll be so close to their release, their actual release date that maybe it won't matter. But the point is, the reason I like pre-order listings is because nine times out of ten, Amazon list listings come up wrong. And so mm -hmm. the great advantage to having it up early is that you can work out the kinks. You can get all the mistakes out 
or you can fill in more as, as more information comes in, like editorial reviews, a better synopsis, a more complete bio, a new website coming online for you, things like that. So mm-hmm. that's why I like to see a pre-order listing as part of the Amazon strategy. Now, you know, I, it, I've i just gone to Amazon while we're talking because I have a new book coming out next month um, mm. called, it's called Snappy, Sassy, Salty, Wise Words for Authors and Writers. And it's actually up for pre-order. Right. And it was, I have to tell you, it was a piece of cake to do because maybe it's because I've been on Amazon for a while. Yeah. Um, but And I do have an Advantage account. But it's right there. People can go ahead and pre-order. And it, it says it's not going to be released till October 15th. And that I and, and you are right, as editorial reviews are coming in, I'm going ahead and I'm adding them. Um, and mm-hmm. although I've got a, I, I've got a huge amount of endorsements now that have come along, mm-hmm. and I've only put up three of them. Um, yeah, but as they come in, you're going to load them. Yeah. Yeah, and and so I have access to do that. And you mm-hmm. know, this is a little. Uh, it's a 160 page, one of those little uh, hardback gift books, mm-hmm. gems that is that I've actually always wanted to do. And it's literally four by six inches. It's one of those little books. Now, so. for those of you who are who are listening to Judith right now, one thing that is good about what she's done that you may not have thought of is that some review houses now require, they are so full of requests that they require an Amazon listing be up before they will consider your title for review. So if you're like Judith and you have your book up for pre-order, that will qualify you at some houses that otherwise you would have to wait until your release date when your listing would normally come up to apply to. So these are these are some of the advantages. So Judith, let's let's talk about that some. So that's exactly mm-hmm. how my author got in is through Amazon Advantage. So tell us about Amazon Advantage and how that works and how you get it, where you go online and what you pay because I always thought it was one of those give your book away free programs, but it's different oh, than no. that, isn't it? Oh no, 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 no. This is uh, it's not. Uh, uh, No, Amazon designed this for the small press. Um, and for the the self published independent published market, so if I was to go up on the inside track and you just go to amazon dot com forward slash advantage um, okay. and you and you go up and I can see I think we have roughly thirteen books um, up yeah i mean we 're a small press mile high press uh-huh. this is our company mile high press, and when you go through it. Um, it's and, and for us, it's not just my books because we publish a few other authors, but that I can go and a, on a multi intraday basis see what kind of orders are going on. I can I can pull down my orders. They notify me. They notify you every Thursday and Sunday when orders uh, for any new orders they want to pull into their warehouses. And if there's any special coming on, they do it. Now here's what's great about the advantage, um, and I will and I'll tell you right up front. Um, you cannot control, so dear authors, get over it. Uh, you cannot control what Amazon is going to discount your book to. Here's what Amazon does. If your book, like my book, has a retail price of $20, Amazon pays me $9 or a 45% of whatever the retail price is. They take a standard distribution. They are a bookstore distribution of 55% and it's based on the retail price you post what they discount your book to now see they already have my book discounted $18 they are still going to pay me $9 it is not a discount a 55% discount of what they decide they're going to market your book at so please understand that and as you go through the process, you set up these advantage accounts um, that they want your banking information. They want to know, you know who they contact for orders. And you want to have all that information available because they will automatically drop into your account on a monthly basis what your sales are. We have had zero problems, Stephanie, ever figuring out what our sales are and what money to expect. They have been very clear, um, and I cannot say that for one traditional publisher I've ever worked with, not one. <laughs> it's, it has always been, 
God, what di- you know, what dice did they roll that I, I didn't know what in the hell was going on? So okay, <laughs> I want to I want to clarify something because this this is a little bit different than what I've been told previously. So when you're working through Advantage, you're actually getting reports in pre-order before your release date of yep. what your yep. orders are. Yep, I I can go up and find out. Yeah. And and so and the thing is that and, and here's why you want to get on and, and I'm so glad you brought this up early on. Oh yeah. You want to get on the advantage of mm-hmm. a get this pre order because this will reflect on what kind of print run you need to do. Mm-hmm. You know, do you do yeah. for me i I never do anything under a thousand. Um, and I may go up to three thousand for a print run. A lot of authors are not gonna be doing this. I get that. But it gives me an idea and now I can go out take the URL link for Amazon, go out to my fans and say, go, 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 wear it, print, get your pre-order in, take advantage of the um, order with Amazon um, mm-hmm. and do that. And then what you do, the other side of that is, dear listener, is that you want to let your fans know to go ahead because when you're in this pre-order stage, nobody can post a review of your book because technically right. they don't have it. Right. Um, only the people I have out as endorsers have it right now. Yeah. And that, um, what, you know, our little beta testing and all those kind of things that we were doing. But, mm-hmm. the, but the other side of that is that you want them to go ahead and then as soon as the gates open, like on my October 15th, as soon as the gates open, then the review saying this book rocks and rolls, etc., goes up. And all these people who have been loved and put endorsements up, I will send their endorsements up back to them, their copy to them, and say, now, lovely people, thank yeah. you. And and here's the, the link to the, the URL link. for right. Amazon, and would you Time do a copy-paste and upload it. Help them out. There's a strategy to do this, yeah. and I've, I've gone through but yeah. and and you know this is a business. This is what we're doing, and this and the strategy that we want to know about. So in this final minute, uh, the, the, the other thing I wanted to, before we go, like, the thing that I want people to understand, they say, well, I'm going to go to the marketplace at Amazon because I I, I will ship it myself, and I'm going to get more money, and I don't have to pay to ship to Amazon. You have to decide what game you're going to play here. Um, I'd rather get Amazon behind me an endorsement. I like saying that I'm a number one bestseller on Amazon, and it works. I mean, people say, oh, it doesn't matter. You know what? People read the reviews on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Don't discount it and Mm -hmm. take advantage of it and get a play and let Amazon start um, co with you other people. We'll be right back, and we'll talk much more Amazon strategies and much more. I'm Judith Riles. With me this morning is Stephanie this is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the rockstar radio network Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author You brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author You's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author You is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author it's not join author you today through its website at author you.org follow author you on twitter at author you and on facebook at author you where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily author you where the author goes to become seriously successful Change the way you publish online. WaveCloud is a new form for authors to manage all their books' information in one place from start to finish, including pricing and listing summary. 
To learn more or sign up for email updates, visit wavecloud.com. Every picture tells a story. And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evie Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303-985-4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. With me today is Stephanie Barco. She is one of the top literary publicists in the United States, and we're actually um, hooked on Amazon right now. And <laughs> hooked on, but we are. <laughs> we are hooked on Amazon right now, and and talking about some of the features that you want to do. And Amazon does move books, period. Uh, mm-hmm. um, but there's positioning and work that you have to do with your contacts and what we called joint venture partners, which is a common term used within bestseller campaigns that people are doing. But you need pals. You need people who who are your cheerleaders to support you. And one of the things that I was telling Stephanie just recently at the Judith Riles Unplugged event I did in Colorado for two extraordinary deep dive intensive days limited to only 30 people we only let 30 people attend this event that I took just randomly a couple of our attendees book titles hooked into their URL on Amazon created tweaks expanded it for Facebook tweaked it again for Google went back and tweaked it again for LinkedIn because each one has different verbiage or the followers on that that you use, that within just a couple of minutes, I reached out and I did multiple entries, scheduled them out over the next week, and then I incorporated the use of hashtags. I know that has the potential of reaching a minimum of a half a million people going on out even further, and it only took a couple of minutes. And when people have the ability to see hands-on how you do it, it's how they begin to do it mm-hmm. as well. Now, mm-hmm. a couple of features that you want to know is, does it cost anything to be on Amazon Advantage? The answer is no, it doesn't. That you you fill out the forms, you do it, and you become a publisher on it. Now, uh, there's always features that you can upgrade, I guess, and pay on it. I've never had to do it. I, I just came in on Amazon Advantage and, and load it. What's great about it, if you are going to have any special campaign, let's say you engage someone um, like Stephanie to run a publicity campaign for your book, that you want to contact them and you just go down to the little contact us tab on the bottom of when you're inside your Advantage account and say, I'm going to be doing a full-born publicity campaign bring in a professional and you need to make sure there's plenty of inventory and tell them how many to carry when we did the inventory the the, the launch on author you creating and building uh, 
your author and book platforms, they pre-ordered 500 copies of the books. So they would have plenty, because this is, I said, this is what I'm going to do. They said, we like what you're going to do. We'll have the books here. And they ordered it within 48 hours. So they'd have hmm. them in their, their warehouses. Okay, that's what, and they also say, hey, if your books don't sell, we need to know where we're going to send them back to. So you let them know that. But that was a piece of cake to do. The other thing that you want to make sure you do and and I noticed that one of mine was not up inside the book, that you've got to go back and make sure you get look inside the book for Amazon. Yeah. That's right. not going to be shown during a pre pre a pre uh pre sale uh, uh mm -hmm. activity. That will be open up afterwards. But again, you have when your advantage account it it tells you, you know, go ahead and subscribe to this and upload the PDF so they can do the conversion over to that. I just have one question uh, about what you just finished uh, describing. You say that Amazon.com Advantage program makes you an Amazon publisher. How is that different than being an Amazon seller? Oh, that's totally different. Okay. Uh, if, if you were a seller, I could be hawking jewelry. I right. could be hawking CDs. Um, now, this right. is where some of the authors do. They decide they're going to be sellers yes. and, and, and sell that way. Um, and then they keep, you know, 80% or whatever it is. You make uh -huh. the decision. I'm a publisher. Mile High Press <laughs> is a publisher, and I'm coming through the publishing realm. And that's where I go. The other thing is that you can be an Amazon associate where you can have a link to you from your website um, to, from your portal to their portal that anything people like what you're showing on your website, which include your book, by the way, um, that you can have them buy it through that portal and you will get an extra kicker, <laughs> a little bonus right. amount. But, yeah. and listen to this, this is a but, it's not available in every state. I'm okay. in Colorado. Amazon got into a pissing match with our tax <laughs> authorities and it was a pissing match. <laughs> And they turned off and they won't, they shut down all the associate accounts. And okay. that you can, because they, uh, our state was demanding that you need to collect the taxes, which is absurd. They do it for others, but you know, you can't do it in Kansas and there's a few other states. So eventually that's all going to go away, but we're still caught in the middle of the pissing match. Let me ask you one more thing, and I promise I'll shut up. I'm just, it's so fascinating to me, you know, how Amazon operates, and it's so deep and wide, and there's so many intricacies to it. When you go into the Advantage program and you fill out the form to create a pre-order listing, mm -hmm. what all is essential at that moment? I'm sure you need an author bio and a synopsis, and well, you need a front gonna, cover. Yeah, you're going to load up, you're going to open up an Advantage, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Amazon.com forward slash mm -hmm. Advantage. You're going to open mm -hmm. it up as the publisher. That's what you're doing first. And right. then what you'll do is start uploading mm -hmm. items. So you're going to upload your first item, which is, and they go through a whole, it's a template. Is it a book? Is it, you know, what is, what is this thing? It's okay. a book. You're going to put in okay. your ISBN. They don't need okay. a Library of Congress. They want the ISBN. They will verify if the ISBN is legit immediately. Okay. Immediately, you will not be allowed to go on and post anything else until that's verified, and it's in, it's instant. Um, and then and you go on and you add in. And here's another little tip I want to tell everyone to do: okay. um, only put you as the author because it asks who the editor is. If there's an illustrator and all that, don't put them on unless it's a children's book and you have okay. illustrated children. Otherwise, do not put those names on because here's what happens. When you're posting, your listing goes live and it comes up on the Amazon site, it'll show all those people and it confuses the search Jesus engines. people. Yeah, I've seen you're, that too. Yeah. yeah, you're the only person, dear author, I want to see up there. It'll ask for the publisher and it, and it goes through, you know, who do we contact for warehouse? Who do we contact for orders? Who do we contact to deliver? Many times for a small press, it's going to be all the one same person, fine, put it all in. You need your bank routing number, you need your bank account number to put in, um, and this is the time that that you're dealing with a business. So, you know, we have a mile high press bank account. Everything goes into that account. It doesn't go in Judith Bryles. It doesn't go into the Book Shepherd's account. It goes into the publishing account. Okay. Uh, so so because so of because of the uh the bank routing and, and the the money uh information that goes in, it's best for an author or a publisher to do this themselves and not delegate it, correct? 
Absolutely. And possess it. Don't give this up. This The other Don't, thing I'm yeah. going to tell you to do okay. is make sure you fill out Author Central and you have an okay. account there because Absolutely. If, you, if you get yourself mm-hmm. into deep doo-doo, I mean, you mm-hmm. can't get any answer because everyone believes you can never talk in person to Amazon. Yeah. This is how you do it. You can you go through Amazon Author Central and do it. That's another, that's, another, that's right. it's a back door. Yeah. It's a back door because they have someone, if you're stuck on something, you can't figure out, Author Central answers you live in one minute. And, and like I couldn't get, one of the images just wouldn't show up, just wouldn't come up. Because yeah. You know, you know, and, and they went over, ah, let, we'll fix this for you. So yeah, love them. Okay, Stephanie, let's talk about the... <laughs> Panorama. Okay, let's talk about let's talk about what we what we've st- supposed to have been talking about, which is my workshop on Saturday, <laughs> September twenty first. On Saturday, September twenty first, in Colorado, in Colorado, in Denver, in Aurora, at the DoubleTree. Right. And what I'm and- going to talk about is promotional panorama, and this class for authors and aspiring authors is. A survey course. You remember when you were a freshman in college and you took a survey course, introduction to blah, blah, blah. That's what this is. It's a 50-foot level look at book promotion today, what it's about, what it entails. So we're not going to do nitty-gritty until the afternoon, and that's optional whether you stay or not. But in the morning, it's really cool because you can come in and take a look at everything available to you and pick and choose what you think might be appropriate for your situation, your title, and whether you want to do it yourself or delegate it. It helps you make that decision as well. Which is critical, and, and I want to let everyone know right now, if you want information on this, you go to authoru.org, click on events, and mm-hmm. uh, you'll see in our flash banner, um, there's a, a Stephanie's picture and it's flashes, but click on events and you'll get the nitty-gritty details, but it's in Colorado, um, and it's the bonus session is in the afternoon, it's only open to 20 people, half the slots are filled now um, That's for great. that. All right. So that's good. That's going to be a tremendous opportunity because it'll be hands on. I mean, I'll just be answering specific questions from specific people. They'll really get a lot yeah. more than than their uh, what is it twenty thirty dollars worth? I'll tell you, yeah. they're going to they're going to well, get a lot more. It's like individual coaching. Yeah, we feed them. We feed them too. But this is laser coaching. So here's what we're going to do. I can't believe we're at the bottom of the hour. So here's what I want to do, Stephanie. I want to start. <laughs> let's get going and coming back when we come back from break. And let's okay. get back. So let's say I have a fiction book. Give me some tips on what to do right now because a lot of people won't be able to attend. This is okay. Judith Riles. You're listening to Your Guide to Book Publishing. With me this session is Stephanie Barco, fabulous publicist. <laughs> This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Do you need postcards that make a statement? How about business cards, flyers, brochures, or NCR forms? Tuvets is the solution for all your printing needs. Providing services specially designed for authors, we deliver exceptional quality colored printing. Most important of all, we specialize in reducing your printing costs. No more waiting. No more standing in lines at your local printer. Online proofing. With our pricing tools calculator, you can get instant quotes on all your printing products as well as shipping rates all over the United States. Just a few clicks of the mouse and you're on the way to discovering how easy and convenient online color printing should be. Contact our friendly, human, account representatives. 
we recognize that you want answers, not voice prompts. Visit our website at www.tu-vets.com or call 1-800-894-8977. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing questions. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All righty. So we talked about some Amazon Advantage strategies, although I hadn't planned on it. It is critical. (laughs) It is critical in any promotional publicity campaign. So totally appropriate. Um, And with me is Stephanie Barco, who has been the mastermind or mistress mind behind many extraordinarily successful campaigns. And I had the pleasure of watching her put together a blog tour for one of my clients and, and that who came from another publisher. And I have to tell you, there were so many screw-ups from the publisher side, but from Stephanie's side, it was stellar. It was stellar. And the only positive results you know, I saw besides creating a good-looking book that we were involved in, but the publisher... And it was a beautiful just, book. It was a gorgeous book. Yeah. But the publisher just kind of weaned out everywhere. I'm, I'm just going to be blunt and say that. But um, here we are. So here we, we have an ideal. So, Stephanie, everybody always says you can't publicize fiction. Tell me oh, how I, you can. I totally disagree. I promote historical fiction which is closer to nonfiction, but anybody can promote fiction like I promote historical fiction. So the first, yeah, the first thing that you want to look at is what is in the book that you can universalize? What topics, subjects, themes, characters are in the book that you can make into a global type of idea. Like, let's say you write a book, a contemporary novel, and within the novel are three guys. And one of the guys is in a wheelchair. What you have immediately in that book is a book for disability. So you can build a whole platform around disability because the guy, there is a guy, 
among these three friends who is in a wheelchair. So he's dealing with a whole set of issues that the other two guys are not dealing with. So that's an audience. It's at least a sub-audience for the book. That's one thing. That's on character. Mm -hmm. Another way you can look at it is what are the three guys doing? Well, in the book, they're, they're startup guys. So they're techies and they're starting a business. So then that's another audience for the book are people who want to start businesses. So you have another theme. And with these, as Judith has said earlier, you would go find hashtags on Twitter. You would work very carefully with social media. With social media, you need, you know, this is where the eyes really get wide in the, in my, the class that I do on promotional panorama because the, the very first thing I tell them is that 50% of your audience is using social media. So if you're not or if you are underutilizing that platform, and it is wide and varied, there's a lot of different social platforms, then you're missing a lot of your audience. You're missing gathering a following, especially if you're two or three months prior to your release date. So these well, are know, some of the ways. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think your 50% number is way too low. And it's, yeah, it's I, I going it's up. To 80, yeah. It's, it's yeah, probably it's, closer to 80%. You mentioned hashtag. Let me just tell our listeners, if you're not sure what hashtag, and Twitter did start it, but all the mediums are using it. Google Plus is using it. Mm -hmm. Facebook is using it. LinkedIn is using it. Where do you find your hashtag that we might connect? Go to hashtag.org and start searching. Okay, go ahead, Stephanie. <laughs> just a little right. side thing. Yeah, no, very, very important. So with social media, I recommend that people socialize every morning. Authors really resist this. They say, I don't want to spend my whole life on social media. I'm not asking you to spend your whole life on social media. I'm asking you to hit it in the morning. If you really do want to cover it well, then you need to subscribe to a program like Hootsuite where you can go out all day long but don't have to do it yourself, meaning it's going to automatically disperse when you tell it to and the way you tell it to. So your social goal in social media, because it's so important, is relationship. You're not selling anything. You're creating relationships. That's why when people talk about their pets or when people talk about food, everybody comes out of the woodwork, or people talk about uh, people post a picture that somebody got married, people come out of the woodwork. That's when you get 60 to 80 likes and comments because that's relationship. So promotion is different, and it's okay to promote, but you don't want to sell anything. Don't, don't put anything down anybody's throat. That is offensive, and it's not what the, the platform is for. So it's engagement, right? So if I put something up about, if, like if I post a picture of my cat, does that have to do with a book that I'm writing? No. But does it help connect my following to me? Yes. And in between the picture of the cat, in my next personal post, what do I have? I have promotional material. Mm -hmm. And they get, and they're very interested in everything I'm promoting, mm -hmm. my following. I've noticed that. So mm -hmm. you, you, you mix it. Remember that uh, it, it's, it's basic psychology that if you give somebody something all the time, they won't appreciate it. But if you give it to them piecemeal and you give it to them intermittently, they're much more keen to, to see if they're going to get it, right? So it's like you're dangling it. Yeah. Yeah. So you do start sharing it. And especially, you know, I can't remember if there's been a fiction book out there with what the protagonist, our hero, being in a wheelchair or, you know, there's there's certainly been special disabilities and people mm -hmm. who are quirky who have odd things going on or, or pulled mm -hmm. back, but yet they, they surface. And people do connect for it. And you can take those little nuances mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you take them and you expand on them mm -hmm. and you'd be amazed how people mm -hmm. would. And, and so a hashtag would be disabilities. Hashtag. Hashtag is a pound sign. Hashtags disabilities. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden it's like going into a whole new living room with all these people mm -hmm. who have an interest in just things related to disabilities or right. special needs or whatever yeah. we want to call it. Yes, exactly. Or people, just people who are different or people, people who, who don't have uh, the same abilities that, w that we do or ha are impaired in some way. Could be a mental disability. 
So there's a lot of different ways you can go at that. That also creates an audience. It creates an audience online. It creates an audience in person. So you can actually go to groups that are interested in this and talk about that topic. You don't have to talk about your book. You can mm-hmm. talk about that topic. You could become uh, a sort of an expert, maybe not a, an expert by by um, by education, but a sort of an expert on that subject, and then go out and talk about that. As long as you can sell and sign afterwards. Okay. So, is is you um, before we get to our, a, another break? I can't believe it. But we got a couple minutes here. So, if I was to then let's say, okay, I've got this tied in social media. Where else do I go, Stephanie? Besides social media, what else do we do today to reach out and publicize our books? Well, I really feel that that it's a three-leg stool still today, and that is, yeah, and so we've talked about one of the legs, which is social media, but the other one is your blog. I think it's very important, and your website, because as a publicist, it's very obvious to me whether or not I can work with somebody because they either have the infrastructure that I can tie the media back to or yes. they don't. Okay. And when you, when you don't have that infrastructure, you have no place to aggregate a following. So you must have some anchors. The first one is the website, the second is the blog, and the third is social media. Although social media is super important today, you have to have permanent places where people can go and where you can aggregate your keywords or there's not going to be any place to send the media. Exactly. So think, and, yeah. Yeah. And, and so in social media, of course, uh, you, can, you can have a Facebook, you can have a Twitter, you can have your Google Plus feed live on your homepage, which you absolutely must do. To, you listen to me, everyone. You must do this. One, pick one of them mm-hmm. at least. I have a couple on mine. But it yeah. shows the search engines that you are not stagnant. Mm -hmm. You are not just kind of floating out here that you're alive and activity is going on. It's critical Mm -hmm. to do that. So on your website, um, what I'd like you to do is get, we have just one minute before this next break, so we'll start it. But Stephanie, what are the key things that we need to have for media to come to to find on our website? What goodies, what kind of tabs should we have? On the website. I, I like simple websites that have maybe five pages. Not every client that comes to me can do it in in five pages or five tabs, Mm -hmm. but that's what I personally like to see. It's a simplicity to it. Within those five, you can have sub-pages. If you need more, it's okay, but that's what I like to see. On the home page, the most important thing to create is trust. And there, yep. you can, yeah, you can take yep. courses about how to do this, but you want your photographs on your homepage. You definitely want All your right, we're Twitter. Gonna, okay, okay, so let's come back to that. But home, we're on the homepage on the website. This is for publicity, fiction, and nonfiction. Your, your guide to book publishing will be right back. <laughs> This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Writing and reading are moving to the cloud. WaveCloud represents a whole new community for writers and readers to connect, communicate, evaluate, and share. Writers hone their craft and build their business. Readers build their favorites. Sign up for updates at wavecloud.com. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing, and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. 
Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from one to 5,000 copies. Today we offer digital black and white and four color high speed inkjet printing, a cost effective way to introduce color into your short run titles. We of course offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in house from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print on demand facility, streaming browser based ebooks and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, we're talking about what you need on your website to not only to attract people for publicity, but what they're looking for so they can make some quick decisions. With me is Stephanie Barco, um, who is one of America's top literary publicists, and she was talking about the emphasis of literally your goal, which, which I went over just a couple of weeks ago in a show we did on websites, is to develop trust. That's the number one thing that you do. So what Stephanie's saying is she wants websites fairly simple. She doesn't want to have 20 million tabs, um, which we call pages at the top, and then there's subsets to these pages. So she likes simple five. Um, I think I have seven on one of mine. But mm -hmm. five works well. She wants to make sure that your photo is on the home page. I'm going to mm -hmm. say that if we've got a new book, I want to see that book on the home page mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, on there. And she also said something about some people want to see a phone number. I'm a believer. I want to see the phone number because I get pissy when I have to, and I can't get a hold of somebody mm -hmm. um, and want to do it. And if you're doing publicity, you better have, you don't want to have them to have a PhD in website searching to find out how to get a hold of you. So, mm -hmm. so I would, I would get your phone number there for you know for publicity have that number um, on that and then Stephanie brought up something so let's get into what kind of social media let's talk about some of the other must-haves on the home page okay so I really believe that you should have all your social icons on the, the home page mine are in my footer you could also have it up on your header it doesn't matter but you want, you want to be on several, and the reason is that maybe the person that you really want to connect with is big on Twitter. Maybe you're not. Maybe you don't care about Twitter. Maybe you have 600 followers and really don't care about it. That's fine, but maybe they do. So especially radio producers want to see what your Twitter following is. Let me tell you something, guys. When you book radio, when I'm booking radio for you, you think that you're – going to that the the producer and the host are going to bring traffic to you it's the other way around for me when i'm booking you that producer wants to know how many followers you have that you are bringing to her 
So that's why you have to have that Twitter following up because that's the first thing they look at. It's like a barometer for for good shows, shows that are booked out six months in advance, shows like that. They they want to know what kind of following you have. So make sure you have your social icons on your home page. The way mine rolls, it's on every page because it's a sta- it's a, a static footer. Yeah, so I, I yeah yeah, and I would do that. And I'm going to make a suggestion here for your where Stephanie said website first, blog, social media. Mm-hmm. That um, that on your blog, make sure that you have all those icons so people can retweet or re Facebook it or repost it. So you want to make sure that all those things are active. Your webmaster does this for you. But, um, I mean, if you're your own webmaster, you go for it. I have someone do it for me. But make sure you do it. And when you're, when, when, if Stephanie's booking you, like I have actually two Twitter feeds, um, that follow, there is a combined 35,000 on them. And you want to let them know that because that they, they like those kind of numbers. Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. <laughs> that means you have a following. That means you can bring a crowd with you when you're on that show. So it's just critical that you have that. Um, again, trust on the homepage, address, phone number, if you, if you don't have privacy issues that prevent you from putting that up there, are really good to have. And as Judith has mentioned to me in the past, you, you can always do a P.O. box. Uh, so that's another way that you could have an address. But address and phone number and headshot really does help create uh, trust and credibility. I like the idea of putting your book, too. If you have a book, that's another way to create uh, credibility because it shows that you're out there as an author. It's hard to be an author unless you're visible. So that's another way to create more credibility. Um, the back page is real important. That's the contact page. Make sure, like, like Judith said, that, that people can reach you. Um, if you're really averse to putting your phone number out there, well, then at least have one or two emails that people can get you through. Um, I'll tell you a story about, about my, my old website. I've revved it since then, but I didn't find out for two months that my web form on my contact page was not working. Oh, ugh. Ugh. And I, I personally, do not like web forms anyway, and that made me like them even less. But every webmaster out there, every web designer is going to tell you you have to have it, that that is the most important thing. And I'm like, why? To me, they're very impersonal. I just don't like them. But test it every once in a while and make sure it works. Speaking from personal experience, you need to get on your website every once in a while to make sure it's functioning properly. Things happen. For instance, if you rev, like let's say you're in WordPress, which I hope you are, when you rev to the new, um, the latest rev of uh, revision of WordPress, sometimes things change. And the same way for your widgets. When your widgets update, sometimes things change. I've had lots of things change on my website when I've revved to, to the latest revisions and things yep. go out and I have to get on the WordPress Google group to find out how to fix it. So you must check when you, when you update and look at your site again and make sure everything's functioning properly. Good idea. And the other thing is I'm going to suggest is that you, uh, if you're not going to do this, you make sure that your web person does it and they check in. I'm going mm-hmm. to encourage everyone to go to, I'm in the middle of doing a total upgrade on my own personal website at thebookshepherd.com. I'm going to encourage all of you to go to authoru.org. Click on the contact page. It, you can absolutely copy, well, you probably probably put your, your information in. But here's what I've got on mine. And I, it, it leads off. Everyone communicates differently. I'm available. If you're a phone person, here's the phone number. If you're a Skype person, here's my Skype. If you're a Twitter person, here's the handle. If you're a Facebook person, here's how to get a hold of all of you. If you're a Google Plus person, here's the community. If you're a LinkedIn person, here, join this group. If mm-hmm. you're Pinterest, here's, and if you want a snail mail here, and if you're just impatient, fill this out and email it to me, and I'm going to respond. Mm-hmm. I can't do it any other way, but it's all there all there don't don't make this difficult for people who want to connect with you mm-hmm. okay all right so that takes care of that all right so what <laughs> else um stephanie we have about five minutes here four minutes here what other things that we need to really know about publicity today um on well the, on the, i, I want to mention one thing about the blog that i think is really important when you're when you're writing your blog post mm-hmm. i think it's important to write it 
like you would a press release that you want to get search engine optimization out of. Okay, so let's do that. Yeah, so if you do that, the details are how you do your title, how you do your body, how you do your closing, and how you tag it. So the first lesson here is to tag your blog post. People say, what's that? That is simply putting your keywords in your dashboard on that particular post on your blog. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can have like standard keywords that that refer to you 100% that, that pull well, or you can have, and you can have either way, more keywords that are only in that article. When I keyword my blog posts, I have them go both ways. I have some mm-hmm. of them just be generic. Like one that pulls really well for me for some reason is Austin Publicist. I'll, maybe I'll put that in, and then I'll also put something like keywording if I'm writing, a bu- uh, writing an article about keywords. So whatever the, the keywords are, tag your blog post so that you have it. And then you want your uh, title to be about uh, 118 or so to 130 characters long, and you want to load your keywords in the first 65 words of your piece. At the end, never, and when you're sending this out, let's say you decide to make an article out of one of your blog posts. If you're sending that out to, say, the Huffington Post to see if they'll publish it, never send an article out without a byline. That's the whole reason you're doing the article is for the track back from your byline back to your website. Well, uh, you you know, here's what I would suggest. On every blog, just have a byline. I always have my signature line in there, my whole description in there. It's just a natural. Yeah. Yeah, um, that so that in. people people know. But if yeah, once you start sending those out as separate pieces, you really do need that. So I, I say the best blogging practices are to choose WordPress software, use keywords yeah. and post titles, and tag your posts. Right. I, I do that too, and then and turn them loose and get them out there. But the keywords are important, and 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 I always would put my own name in it. By the way, I think that That's because a, yeah. people will start tracking it. Um, I know that I always use get published and how to get published because people are always looking for those phrases. Those are key mm-hmm. phrases that they're after. But everyone's going to be different, mm-hmm. different, and 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 whatever juicy thing that your blog's about, it's critical. All right, Stephanie, we're literally out of time. Um, and that there's so much more. So here's what I'm saying. If you're, if you can get to Denver, Colorado on the 21st of September, you want to be here. Get information, all details at authoru.org. Um, and click on the events, uh, icon and it'll unravel everything that's there. It's, it's a great deal. Stephanie, your website is what? StephanieBarco.com. S T E P H A N I E. B like in boy, A R K O. Great. And then we will have you back. And I want to do some deep diving into step-by-step for nonfiction, step-by-step for fiction. With that, this is Judith Bryles. Thank you, Stephanie, for being with us. You're listening to your guide to book publishing. We'll be with you next time. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryan.